Thanks for tuning in to Simmer Radio Summer Podcast. Today we got a special, special guest. It's not this, this not your regular artist that I have on here, man. This is a man, this is certified. Man, me having him is like me having Lil Wayne to the podcast <laughs> to the interview. <laughs> oh man, I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate man, you. I, I mean, like I said, you are talented. I mean, first first of all, I want to just take the time and say, man, I look at you like a brother. You talented, you gifted. I mean, I just want to give you my flowers. You know what I mean? Just like man, you deserve everything because you you just not a regular artist, man. You more than a regular independent artist. You did everything you have to do. You laid the blueprint. You did everything. I'm talking about you work more than you are, you work more harder than any other artist talking about. They're just now coming in the game. You you did everything you're supposed to do. So I just want you to introduce yourself, where you raised, where you're from, how music inspired you, just your background for now. Oh uh, man, shit. First of all, if I wanna, you know, tell you I appreciate you. I know all shots out the God, and then all the gods above that keep blessing me, you know, blessing yeah. everybody else, you hear me? But, you know, I go by the name of Eastside Baby T that man. I'm, you know, from Baker, Louisiana, Baton Rouge, the big Zach, you hear me? Mm. You know, the rack where it go down next, you hear me? Yeah. I go, just just dropped the album called Die World, man. You could look it up on all platforms, you know. Uh shit, my latest single, Five Stars. Oh, yeah. oh, you are you probably don't hear some of mention it uh really one. I mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, y'all come fuck with me, man. Keep supporting me, man. All my old supporters, keep bringing the new supporters, man. That's what it's about, man. Unity. You know, becoming one, man. Building that army, man. Man, that's all it's about, man. And man, I, I, I wanna go way back right now. You know what I mean? A lot of artists just a lot of for all the new listeners or new fans, all that, this is Eastside Baby T Dot. And when mm-hmm. I go back and what is the song that touched me when I first, you know, see I mean, see Brown wish you wish uh wish me well introduced me to you. And when I went back to your catalog and you have hella songs and this, the song that touched me was Cold Nice, man. Yeah. Man, talk about Cold Nice, man. Oh man, Cold Nights was uh, a very emotional. Uh, it was a very emotional uh, process, you know. I, I wrote Cold Nights after finding out my mom was uh, had, had been murdered, mm. and um, I know I needed something to touch the situation, you know, I, I know I needed something to, everybody going to be, you know, wondering what happened, you know, so yeah. with, you know, music being my outlet, you know, like shit, music, man. Expressing. Yeah, you know, so that was my way of expressing of, you know, like shit, you know, like, man, a lot of niggas don't think about it, but, you know, just like being in a position where you can't do shit. Nah. You can't you 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 can't do nothing to save your mom. You can't do nothing to help your mom. You just only thing you can say is I'm coming. <laughs> yeah, that's all you can you say. Right. Yeah, man. So don't touch me so much. Like I say, I, I did. What, go ahead, brother. I said that song touched me because you know what I mean. Just hearing that song, you know, I mean, sorry for your loss. What happened to yours, man? Rest of soul. It touched me because I lost my mom in the. Not in that way, but in just in just health uh, itself, you know. And that's why that, that song always, you know, I can go back to listen to it and just close my eyes and just that song really just bring me relief, you know. That someone yeah, man. just crazy, man. You know, I'm, I mean, it's glad I'm glad that you know I can touch people in the way that you know, like I touch you, or I can, yeah. you know, I, I get see see. I always tell me that man. Every time I listen to this song, man, this song sends shivers down my spine. Yeah. And you know, like I when it, I, don't, I barely even listen to it now. You hear me? Because mm. you know, it don't do nothing but send me down that memory lane. Where you know, like when I first got that phone call, man. When I first, you know, when I first got that, man, man. You know where you at, man? Your mom's been shot. You you need to get here, like just I'm boom. Six, yeah. I'm six hundred miles away. I'm seven hundred miles I- away, and. I gotta drop everything that I'm doing. Just to, go straight in, yeah. 
Yeah, you know, so. Man, that was deep. That's yeah, all. man. Deep, deep, man. And going from that, you know, from uh, your catalog and all that, you know, we did talk about you You dropped five star. Hold on, bro. Let me put my dog out, man. That nigga doing the most right now. I'm coming right back, bro. All right, bro. Huh. Sorry, bro. Yeah, put him out because I'm on the podcast. Uh, yeah, sorry about that, bro. No, no, you good. So now we go and follow on that, you know, and as like I said, you as an artist, big time like that. I look at you a big time artist. In my in my way, from my point of view, and I want everybody, the whole world to see that as big East Side baby. And the sun <laughs> really, man, that's so crazy. Man, let's talk about all eyes on me, man. <laughs> oh man, all eyes on me. That was just, you know, me being caught up in the moment as in when you realize uh people are praying on your downfall, you realize people are basically waiting on you to call them and ask for help. You know, yeah. people are everybody is, you know, basically to every story is always three sides, you know, his yeah. side, they side, and then the truth. But it, it gets to the point where it's like, man, I know I just gotta do what I gotta do for me. Yeah. You yeah. know, like um who nobody knows if you making the right decision or if you you know you right or wrong. It's always people are always making it a right or wrong situation. But at the end of the day, you know, hey I gotta do it best for me. Even if I'm wrong, even if I'm right. Yeah, but at the end of the day, it's just like basically I just know I gotta put my best foot forward. I know every move count. I know every time I do something, somebody what? watching me. Just straight foot in the gas. Yeah, you know. So that that's what all lies on me, man. So I'm gonna talk that shit and make motherfuckers feel some type of way and wonder, man, who are you talking about, man? Well, who? What? What? what what's the situation? <laughs> well. But it's to the point where, like, man, I got, I feel like I got the world against me, you hear me? Mm. Like, man, I, I just, shit, like I say, I, I just posted that shit, man. It's either you with me or against me, but yeah. at the end of the day, because I feel like I done showed enough love, you hear me? You show, uh. as an artist, you is, man, you show, it's like you coming up and you, you know what I mean? You always, we always talk about having a team and having, Supporting system, when you coming up and then, you know you do all this and this and that and and the ones that really you that you know they they'll be your day ones and really the ones that really you know support you and and and, and p- promotion is free, you know what I mean you can you know with all that you know sending you can share my song and all this but you say right. you were day one and you fuck with me and all that and you just come on man and now you against me because I'm doing something that's gonna try to benefit us or do something big for us. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, man, it's, it's mostly because it's mostly on some shit as in motherfuckers think you're going to forget about them if you make it. You hear me? Yeah. Like, motherfuckers just expect for you to just put them first on the on, on your list when you got 30 things going right now. You hear me? Like, and when it's, when it's dead, you know, you really just got to put the feelings aside. Like, you really just got to be this asshole to life and then you know like that not caring motherfucker knowing that man i care but at the end of the day shit if i keep putting y'all feelings above my feelings i'm not gonna get nowhere real shit um I so it's just now going forward from there you did a lot of songs with a lot of big artists man and can I <laughs> ask you, you know what i mean you want to go deep in is you since you did so much songs with the big artists man what is the pro and cons and getting a feature and someone big in your city and then after you do the song and all that you barely get any love from that artist i mean we're not talking direct but it's just mm. what is the pro and cons you know what i mean just they sharing the song or this or that or they playing his man, i did a song a- they playing his song on the club but not the one we did or you know what i mean what's when, yeah Artist that's taking, let me. I'm gonna try to get a feature or from a big artist, man. You already, you already seen that. You done that. What is the pro and cons, man, from that? Um, uh, 
Man, and when you say that, bro, I, I, I go all the way back to, shit, 2021. Um, man, uh, shit, 2020, bro, I done, I done work with a lot of artists. I done, I done did a lot of work with artists. And the most, the, the, the con was it, you know, like, nobody promoted, you hear me? Like, everybody was just... Nigga just wanted that bridge, you hear me? Nigga, yeah. nigga, nigga really? didn't give a fuck about the song, you hear yeah. me? So, I, uh, I basically just had to look at it from a different standpoint, you know, because shit, when, when you realize, like, man, it's a doggy dog world, bro, and yeah. so, nigga, everybody just trying to get them. Everybody just trying to get them. They don't give a fuck about was, you know, a lot of people be sleeping on this shit, but don't nobody really think about what's left on the table. Real shit. You know, like, them pools, you know, them them royalties, and, you know, oh. like, yeah, you know, it, it's so much shit that when you meet the average Baton Rouge artist or, you know, the average artist mm. or the average rapper, whatever you want to call it, that don't really look at this as a business, you know, like, niggas just look at this like shit, this is a way to get money. This is where you get money. I'm an artist now. I <laughs> all my songs, and that's why a lot of yeah. artists and they don't understand the music business. That's why yeah. they have, have that it's knowledge. A, it's a business, you hear me? So you you really gotta you really gotta know how to sit down and analyze. You know what you did right, what you did wrong. You know, like how how can you make this situation better? Yeah. Hold up, bro. I'm looking for me a lighter. I don't misplaced my shit. <laughs> Damn, Smokey. <laughs> Thank you, time, man. Yeah, we did come right back. It's getting us lighter. We got to light this shit, man. This is any bit getting, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Because, you know, man. I ain't gonna lie. When, 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 when talking about fuck shit, bro, just fuck shit, that shit just aroused me. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> that shit just pushed my. Push my temper to the blow, bro. <laughs> but yeah, man. Um, now we going from that. You know, what I mean, you want to share the pros of that getting the feature from a major artist? Oh yeah, man. The pros is like shit. You already know. You get the recognition. Yeah, you get the recognition. You, yeah. you people that don't, you know, sleep on the upcoming artists and you know underground artists. They 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 see you working. They they give yeah. you your flowers. You know, like. I got pop my shit out right now, and that bitch is almost at sixty thousand streams. You hear me? And that bitch ain't been out seven months. You hear me? You, so, you beat me. You beat me. That was that's the song I was about to. I was about to say, let's talk about pop my shit because that's yeah. the song. And you had what? You had to be. Uh, you had Wop Beezy on that and Mouse on the track. You. I mean, yeah. you had. This, man, let's talk about pop my shit, man. It's just I, that's what you beat me to. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, with with us talking about the artists I don't work with, and you know, like the the biggest pro that I done had was with Mouse and Wop. Mm. You know, like with them, like with they groundwork with the the the, the, the acknowledgement that they don't already had the, the the shit basically the work that they done put in before I even was even thought of. You hear me? Damn. So so shit that that gives you that. You know, like that extra push, like man, that's like, fuck, like you can get on a song with a nigga that been putting in work. You get on another song, nigga that been putting ben, in work. Ben, you just, you just fall in, and that shit just flow. Man, that yeah. shit good too. And then the way it just, <coughs> it's like you, you, you was someone that's actually doing shit that actually been. Yeah. So that just give you a little a push and an uplift and motivate you. Yeah, cause you know it. And what I'm learning in this rap business and this rap game, whatever it is, man, it's really about relationships. Yes. Nigga, nigga don't give a damn about how much money you got, bro. Yes, sir. If you ain't got that right relationship with the right person, nigga ain't gonna wanna do business with you. Nigga gonna end up, you know, taxing you. Oh. It's, it's all, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fuck shit that, you know, like we try to skip over as underground artists when I say we, as in. We don't, we don't want to go talk to this nigga that they got the connection. We want to go straight to the big fish. Yeah. That, that ain't the process. You can't, not, you can't skip that oh, shit. 
it's all about relationship, man, and connection and 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 just you being an indie artist, man, and you just being an indie artist and you did so much work, you put so much work. And every time I, I look at what you're doing, you look at your social media, all that, you always, even though, you know, you're pushing so much, I always see, you You know, you still go out and go to showcases. Oh, yeah, most definitely, bro. I always, I like to go to showcases and just, I like to listen to my competition. Mm. I like, I like to, I like to listen to it and see what the crowd likes. Like, even though I know I got my own unorthodox vibe. Yeah. And shit, you really just got to listen to me to vibe with me. And then mm. you be like, damn, this nigga, you know, like, shit, just <laughs> niggas that you, you know, like that five years track that a lot of niggas just skip over, you just, hear me? So, and you, you know, that's when you present it, like, damn. What, like, who, yeah, you who, hear me? So, God damn. I, yeah, so I, I, like, I like to sit back and then just, you know, basically examine and, you know, see what my competition is like, see what people like and everything. Yeah. I um I, I really just slow down on showcases because it's like if the right people not in the room, bro, it's like we just wasting our fucking breath. Like, really? Like it's 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 cool, you know. Like yeah, you gonna get you gonna get one or two fans. You might get somebody to tell you, man, I like your song and all this and that. But you know, at the end of the day, it's about making moves. Like bro, put me in the room that you know I I can I get a chance to win or something. Real yeah. shit. I'm here to present. I'm over here trying to see who the hell, who, who who's in the room, who I'm presenting to, too. Yes. Yeah. I don't want to just come to that bit. I done paid 500, 300, 200, whatever y'all want. Real and shit. all I all I got was a, a good a good time, a song performed, and a, a drunk a drunk night. You know what I mean? Like, Real I, shit. I had I had to stop that shit because I was running with some I was running with some folk that was you know like this shit like we wasn't getting nowhere we'll bro, we'll go we'll go city to city mm. but with nobody at the club <laughs> it's just crazy man and then I'm gonna go in this because I say a lot of artists I mean you showcase yourself you go to a city you go to a state and you presenting yourself then you go on the stage with the people on the stage. And I want to go back is, I see it was on part, you know, it's, it's always a hated nigga in the room. We know that. And, and anywhere. Right. You was on the stage. I see that. I mean, the way you keep your composure and your your presentation and just you being, you know, professional, I seen a nigga bump you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That was, um, <laughs> I was, um, I might have been in the play, so. I'm, I'm somewhere in the country, bro. I was somewhere yeah. in the country when I shot that. Uh, well, well, matter of fact, when we did this song, when I did that uh performance, whatever. Mm. But but yeah, man, it was just and it was crazy because that night, man, I even hired security that night. Yeah. And now I'm I'm looking at my security a certain way, like damn, man, y'all just letting a lot of shit slide. You heard how to pay it out. <laughs> yeah, I done paid out. Now I'm finna beat a nigga up just for trying to. I just want my respect. You hear me? Just man, man let me get my little five minutes of shine. You hear me? Yeah. <laughs> you, How the hell I'm a position you're not doing? <laughs> yeah, you know, like so. It's just you. You see the type of environment that we live in. The, the, yeah. the world that we live in. We're like, man, you can be in the spotlight. It' gonna be another little red, another little nigga wicked. just Out trying to wicked. get his. Yeah, you know, it's like, man, you could have just waited until my song was over to go up there and put your man, get a DJ your song. Man, when I seen that shit, and then I'm like, do, do you know Eastside Resume? This nigga gonna knock the nigga out in his backyard. <laughs> <laughs> man, what, what happened over there, Eastside? <laughs> you know, bro. You know, you gonna knock the nigga out in your backyard. <laughs> I mean, on, on some real shit, I really don't, <coughs> I really don't even, you know, try to carry my rap sheet yeah. or, you know, like basically just think, you know, I'm the hardest nigga out, I'm the baddest nigga out, like that shit Real. is irrelevant to me. That's how you, you know, cause, yeah, cause even, even the biggest, baddest nigga can get knocked on his ass. Right? Any, because, any, you can be anything. You can be the biggest nigga, you can be the strongest nigga, you can be the biggest artist, any, I mean. You never know, man. The big dog. Yeah. Too. Yeah. So you know, you you never uh, underestimate nobody. None of that. You know. So 
I don't, I don't go nowhere on no cocky shit, shit. But I demand my respect everywhere I go. I, I'm, I'm not. If a nigga won't get disrespectful, then that, that just, I feel like you pushing my button. The real shit. So, shit. I gotta do what I gotta do, but I'll, I'll jump. I ain't even the violent nigga. You hear me? <laughs> I, 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 I real talk. I, I hate violence, bro. But at the end of the day, I know how to fight. Yeah. I know how to shoot a gun. I know how to, I know how to defend just myself. Protect myself, yeah. Yeah, so but at the end of the day, that ain't, that ain't my, you know, my approach is yeah, where I go, like, yeah, man. That's you don't want to like, like that, you know, you just, <clears throat> I mean, when it, when I need to protect myself, I protect myself, but I'm not trying to show, oh, I'm violent, or I'm this, or I'm that, and I'm the biggest, hardest nigga, no one can touch me, nah, man, you don't want to have that energy, and you don't want to yeah. put the universe. Cause I can... Yeah, bro. Sure. Yeah, cause real talk, man. I don't, I don't, I don't lost a lot of niggas. I don't, I don't lost a lot of soldiers. I don't, I don't seen death. I don't look death in his eye one too many times. You yeah. hear me? So when you see, like, man, I was, I was in the club, <clears throat> maybe, maybe about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and I was talking to my dog two three, mm. and nigga was asking two three like why two three ain't got his his big chain on, like, you know, like his medallion that you could spin or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, like, I just put my little two cents in, and I'm like, bro, you don't, you don't see how, you don't see how all the dying left and right, you hear me? Yeah. Just, just, you know, just by wanting to live and wanting to look good, and, you know, like, and then we in Baton Rouge, you hear me? So, <laughs> man, we in the hood, man. I'm, I, I go to the hood. I'm not wearing my best jewelry, and if I do, that's because I got that bitch on me. It's on my no. mind. I don't give a fuck about nothing. But at the end of the day, bro, we got to think smart, bro. You can't no. always be a dumb nigga, you hear me? You got to be a smart nigga, bro. And you got to be more around, uh, you, you know, you got to know your surroundings. <clears throat> I'm going to the, yeah. most of the niggas die in their hood or their own city. So why the hell are you going to tell me why I don't got my chain on, I got my God jewelry on, and we got a hated nigga in the corner at the gas station? Yeah, but well, you know what you know what for the lick. Yeah, but you know what his response was? Yeah. Man, we from Baton Rouge, nigga. We die about this shit. Yeah, real shit. My response, nigga, I ain't even had no response because yeah, we do die about this shit, but at the end of the day, my nigga, that that still ain't thinking, you know, right. Yeah, you know that, that don't you know, you ain't thinking in your right mind right now. You just ready to play, ready to crash. Yeah, that's cool, <laughs> but man, at the end of the day, that shit easy, bro. It's easy to crash. It's easy to flash out. Yeah, really. They, and they, they so fast, I'm trying to crash out right away. Yeah, like, man, we're going to go to war, man. Let's go to war about something, nigga. Let, let's go to war about something real, my nigga. Like, at the end of the day, I, 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 ain't, I ain't the type of nigga. I don't, I'm not going to knock a nigga ass out, but he got a bigger chain than mine. His chain's shinier than mine. I want that nigga shit. Like, come on, bro. You sound yeah. like old hating ass nigga. Just hate. It's hate. hate, man. <laughs> yeah, bro, but. And then they, I know a lot of these niggas, they talk a lot of shit. They get on the internet and they do all this. They do all that. So shit. Man, if a nigga walk down on you, nigga catch you slipping shit. In the day, man, got to be one of your friends, one yep. of your partners, one of them niggas you done pissed off. It's, you know, it's a revolving cycle, my nigga. So a lot of niggas don't really be paying attention to that shit. So that's just how I am, bro. Man, that's what I love about you, man. You know, you're just so wise. You're just so... So why it's so smart and you know how you roll and just a lot of niggas don't think like you. They don't even think like yeah. and as just straight up, let's get this. You I see you, I look at you as a businessman. And you know, you know, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? All, everybody's always in a learning process and you always want to grow. And I see that in you. You always want to grow, you want to grow to grow to grow to and get to the next level. Then you drop, yeah. then you came out of nowhere and dropped toxic with AJ. Oh yeah, man, toxic. That that's that bitch like. I don't think, you know, like when you say shit that rub people the wrong way and it, it just, they just got to agree to it. Like a lot of women don't like it because it's basically, I'm calling you out on your shit. This is the type of shit that you do. But at the end of the day, it's like a point proven, you know, like, bitch, well, fuck it. Maybe I am just toxic. You hear me? Maybe I am a just toxic motherfucker. You hear me? So. Mm -hmm. It, it, at the end of the day, that shit just came out to be so fun because I don't know if you be paying attention to everything, but I be paying attention, bro. Man, I so, look at I, I watch everything. Yeah, so, man, 
It's a whole lot of toxic shit. And, Everybody in a perfect time. Uh, time. Yeah, everybody's talking about toxic this, toxic that, you know. And I was like, damn, we just dropped a song like this, like. Time, <laughs> and then with all the stuff going on, and just, I mean, just look, look, just look at the industry how they, <clears throat> the females, I mean, coming out with them toxic songs, and you know they pushing that. Uh, fuck this baby daddy and this and that, you know, and all that shit. You drop that, you know, and then I, that's why I see you know your market. Yeah, man. It's just when with me doing this music shit, it's like basically I, I gotta give the people something they want. Mm. I know I I, I, could, I could match my vibe and I could, I, I could tell my story, but at the end of the day, everybody got a sad story, you know? Yeah. Everybody going through something. So. Now let's give them people something that they can relate to, or like shit, something that all of us going through. Not just one person, you hear me? Like just shit, all of us going through. Make it, make it in a way that motherfuckers can relate to it. Make it in a way where motherfuckers can sit back and laugh 